Well, it looks like this is as uh, good a place as any to uh, start this little vlog of vlog. Hanging out to uh, New Jersey, uh, Jersey Shore Power Sports. Uh, this, uh, this spider here is uh, due for uh, its first service and it's actually way overdue for its first service. So, it's going in for that. And uh, just in time for the uh, end of the winter riding season, I'm getting the, uh, I had ordered the uh, heated grips for this, the uh, OEM ones from uh, Can-Am. And uh, since they're gonna have the bike, uh, I'm gonna have them put them in. And then I'm like, apparently you have to take all this plastic off to get to them. To get to the wiring for the uh, grips so I got uh, a couple of extra things to add to it and I'm like you know what put those uh, put those on at the same time so with any luck they'll uh, put on the uh, LED headlights and uh, because this is an F3T it doesn't have the uh, it doesn't have, I guess you call them driving lights, fog lights, whatever the hell it is. It's uh, It's got the blackouts for it and the wiring. It just uh, it doesn't have the switch over here and all that junk. But the kit I got from Sling Mods uh, should just bolt into place instead of the factory one because this factory one's like 400 and something dollars, I think. You yeah. know, this one will have... Uh, I think it gets hooked up to the driving lights, so uh, they'll be running when the bike's on, and it'll switch into uh, like a high beam when the uh, when you hit the button. So I'm not one to uh, my days of messing with electrical connections and shit, and uh, it's over. I'm not uh, I'm not feeling that. So. And since they're doing the service, and uh, I had already put the uh, uh, set of aftermarket uh, heated grips on the Riker, and man, do those make a difference? They were they were awesome. The Riker just happens to be in the uh, garage for the winter, so I'm kind of using this here Spider exclusively. And right now, I'm trying to trying to beat the rain. The little lady's gonna follow me out to New Jersey and uh, pick me up at the uh, dealership repair shop, whatever you want to call it. So, and then uh, I did not have a uh, good experience with the uh, service department of the people that sold me uh, the Riker and the Spider. So. I uh, was looking uh, online for Can-Am and this, uh, this particular place has uh, the platinum level. I guess you could call that the top of the line. Uh, where the place in Staten Island is the bottom of the barrel. So the guy should be expecting me today. You know, probably won't remember that I called him, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, I have the parts in the trunk up there. Uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll put some pictures up on, on them. Uh, yeah. Let me try that again. Maybe I'll take, uh, uh, I already have the pictures, so uh, maybe I'll post them uh, or put them in the video here somewhere so you know what I'm talking about. It's, uh, it's a very balmy 60 degrees right now, especially for February. But unfortunately, uh, in the winter when you get this warm weather you get rain so Thursday uh, it's supposed to be pouring rain Friday pouring rain and we'll see and then, uh, I mean, when I called the dealer up uh, or the service department it's a uh, good sign was the uh, he answered it with uh, within uh, a couple of rings Nothing worse than when you're calling somebody up and it's just like ring, ring, ring. It's like, 
the hell does nobody work here? So, someone actually answered the phone. That guy sounded pretty cool. So, high hopes. You know, I called uh, the local service guy, and it's just like no one answered the fucking phone. It's like, uh, and then uh, I was supposed to have the. They were supposed to put the heated grips I had purchased onto the Riker, but that didn't happen, so I wound up doing it myself. I wound up doing, uh, having to replace the, uh, the right grip. Entire, not the grip itself, but the, uh, the throttle position center and all this shit. So, luckily, only idiots like myself uh, probably break that part, so it was actually available. So, that, uh, Called up a part supply place and got that delivered. And then, uh, once the repairs were made, uh, let's just say it was a bit more careful installing the heater grips, and uh, they worked. It was an all day job. I don't have a garage at my house, so doing it in the front yard is not fun, uh, especially when you consider you gotta take plastics off and those little uh, pocket buttons. It wasn't difficult. Uh, the only thing is like the, the aftermarket heated grips, they're made for a seven eight bar and a one inch on the uh, throttle. But uh, there's hard plastic in the center of these grips. And uh, that has no give. It's not the best design. Garden Park South. Okay, I'm gonna go in state. Looks like that guy missed his turn. So, uh, let's just say if you're installing parts and you uh, resort to a hammer, you're probably doing something wrong. So, I was definitely doing something wrong. But, uh, you know, live and learn. No harm, no foul. It's only money, right? Break your toys, fix them. It is what it is. Uh, yeah. Good thing I didn't film that because that would really just be an embarrassment. So, you know, taking a leisurely cruise. I'm not, uh, I don't feel like setting uh, land speed records today. Not great. Of course, I'm also driving into the goddamn sun. That just makes everything better. Uh, you know, I just haven't been, uh, I haven't been filming anything lately, because quite frankly, I didn't realize that uh, I have a pin lock for this helmet. And uh, driving in the winter in the Northeast, uh, you're gonna get, <laughs> fog is probably the least of the problems it's been so cold on some of these dates. Uh, one day I actually had uh, frost in the uh, helmet. You know, I got to my house and I took the helmet off and I, uh, Watch the uh, snow melt inside my helmet. So, and I got the pin lock on this one, so fogging shouldn't be an issue. Because I will tell you, if, uh, if you live in an area where uh, it does get really cold out and your helmet's fogging, man, I'm telling you, that pin lock, it works. 100% of the time, it works. And I don't even have the top of the line one. I think the one that's installed on this helmet's a 70. I think the, uh, I have a Nolan helmet. That's my go-to one. I think that's a 70 as well. I think they go up to 120. Quite frankly, I don't know what the difference is, but uh, I'm sure it means something if they're uh, doing it. But they do work. You know, it's, uh, it's a yeah, stain you lane, that's all. Uh, it's only like a 30 minute, 30 mile trip, so it shouldn't be that bad. Luckily most of it's this uh, highway. I'm not, uh, not the most familiar with the uh, off, off the beaten path roads in New Jersey. It's funny, it's like, uh, 
when did I get this thing? Late last year, I think? No, you know what, it was, it was longer than that. Uh, well, it's got almost uh, 3,000 miles on it now. Actually, I think it's over 3,000 miles. You know, I'll post something on the video when I uh, actually feel like checking it out. But, uh, I do miss my Riker, though. But, uh, different bikes for different purposes. But uh, this one happens to be the most versatile between the two. That's the reason why I put the other one in the uh, garage. Just in case I felt like doing something stupid. So. And, uh, been uh, pretty much riding uh, into work every, every night on this. Uh, the cold, the cold is not the issue. Uh, the wind chill is not the issue. Uh, you know, thanks to uh, Ducati NYC on his YouTube channel, they got the uh, Highway 21 heated gloves, and uh, those definitely work a charm. I'm not gonna lie. I had a I had a previous pair of heated gloves, but uh, more like snow gloves, and uh, because they're fabric, they just uh, they let the cold in and they let the heat out. So they did get, they did get toasty, but on the highway, uh, no bueno. You know, good for shoveling snow, good for probably snowboarding, but going down a highway at 70 miles an hour, you know, I'm not feeling it. I can't tell if these roads are wet or not, actually. <laughs> you know, being a little cautious. Uh, so I got these, and then I uh, got a heated vest, I got heated socks. I purchased it all myself, so I have no reason to uh, throw them a, a bone about anything. You know, but I will tell you that these gloves are uh, pretty good. There's probably better ones, but uh, I don't I don't want to be wired into the bike, personally. And uh, the heated vest was actually pretty good, too. So, this has a really, really high neck. So when you try to button the collar on your jacket kind of like catches it's only drawback really but, uh, it does have a really uh, the most effective pad is actually in the back of your neck and if you don't have like a balacaba or something like that uh, it could get really uncomfortable even on a frigid day but if, if you tuck your uh, balacaba in there pretty good it'll keep it getting uh, uncomfortable and it really, you can feel the heat on the back of your neck. I would assume that'd be pretty good if you're on a really long journey too. You know, and your neck's getting stiff, a little, like a little hot compress. Not bad. So getting off at exit 114. So, uh... The one thing that's plagued this bike since we got it was the uh, vibration. And I'm quite certain that it's the uh, belt. It's either too tight or it's too loose. I'm gonna go with too loose. And I did put the uh, Sling Mods belt tensioner on it. And it took uh, it took a, little, a lot of the vibration out. I'm not gonna lie, it did a really good job. But uh, like right now I'm doing a certain speed and uh, I can feel it uh, it's not the bike I can definitely it's and I don't want to say it's a powertrain either it, per se I don't think it's a transmission or the engine I definitely think it's the belt so when I talk to this guy I'm definitely gonna have to uh, I'm definitely mention it to him to you know double check the belt and shit Proof in the pudding is in the tasting, so when I get it back, I'll have to do another video on the ride back and see if it, uh, all that stuff worked. One of the guys at work who uh, rides a Harley quite religiously, he told me, he's, you know, I kind of believe him, that uh, the heated grips uh, aren't going to help you in the winter time. They're, uh, 
they're basically for uh that's the word I'm looking for. The spring and the fall. Or when you get caught out there and you don't have the right uh, the right gloves on, you're you're a little underdressed and it gets cold. So Uh, go with the heated gloves for when it's like really chilly and then uh, you know you put a pair of more comfortable lighter gloves on and if you get caught out there then you just pop the heaters on get them uh, up to temp which is uh, you know I did that I did that on the Riker after uh, I had a particularly cold day you know I didn't have these gloves on I had my uh, Alpine stars and they're a winter glove, but trust me, they're like, uh, they're a spring and fall, they're not winter. But, uh, that being said, with the heated grips, it, uh, it made a difference. It, uh, it was not uncomfortable. That's for sure. So. I'll be making this run a lot more uh, come the springtime, and it's definitely in the summer. Yeah, some of my wife's family members have a house on the Jersey Shore. So, might be putting in for a couple of long weekends at work and avail myself of those facilities. Maybe you'll be looking uh, looking forward to some videos of that uh, come this uh, spring and summer. Yeah, I'm not a beach guy, so I'll probably just go down there and uh, either take this or the Riker and just uh, bum around. So, wasn't really planning on uh, doing so much talking. <laughs> Yeah, I've been, uh, basically I've been sitting home, it's like, uh, my days off, it's, uh, quite honestly been doing nothing but raining or snowing, or basically hurricane force winds. And, uh, and nowhere really to go, it's just like, uh, it's the middle of winter, where, where am I going? Uh, basically hibernating hence the reason for the uh, lack of videos and, uh, you know I got a new uh, I got a new uh, adapter thingy for the GoPro so hopefully no more voiceovers but, uh, I think it's called a medium mod I don't know whatever it is crap but uh, I think the uh, the plug going into the back of it has been vibrating itself loose Hence uh, the cracking and everything else. Hopefully, uh, when it gets to the dealer and I shut this thing off, it doesn't sound like complete shit. And you can actually hear what I'm saying. I mean, if it sounds like crap, then uh, maybe I'll do a voiceover. So, damn it, 66 degrees. 60 when I left the house. I am uh, what they call overdressed and overheated. That's for sure. This should be my exit coming up. Sounds like someone's got a fireplace going. Look at that, there's bikes on fire. One of the two.
Hopefully they don't continue to drive into the sun. Easy pass paid. Okay, guess I'm making a left up here. I'm not gonna lie, this uh, this helmet does not vent for shit, especially with the uh, the GoPro blocking the uh, mouth intake. Great, I got glare on the fucking phone. God damn it. I think I'm supposed to be going this way. And then I think I'm supposed to be going that way. over here. I guess I'm on this squirrely little road for a little while. Looks like wind. Yep. little neighborhood for the uh, apparently well healed Tatum Park
Bagging the right, following the train tracks. Definitely a lot stiffer than uh, than you would think. Christ, I'm actually sweating right now. Definitely overdressed. <laughs> I mean, all I have is my jacket on and the, uh, the crappy liner it comes with. Red on red. All right, looks like this place is uh, point six miles away. That wasn't a bad trip. Looks like that's it right there. We have arrived. Oh, time to go inside and introduce myself. <laughs> 